What's going on, Badger Nation? Welcome to the PPC Den Podcast, the home of the world's first and longest running podcast on Amazon PPC advertising. We're here to make your Amazon advertising life a little bit easier, a little bit more profitable. Today on the show, I'm joined by my good friend, Blair Forrest from AMZ Prep. Uh, and Blair Forrest from AMZ Prep is one of the sharpest minds in the Amazon community. Uh, we have an amazing topic today. Uh, basically, we break down jumping in to Amazon Canada in under two weeks. Let's jump into it. Alrighty, Blair. Many Americans, they're fascinated with Canada. Uh, I'm mm. curious on if you could just summarize what life is like uh, for a typical Canadian. Cold, you know, we're looking at a, so I'll, I'll walk you through the day. Um, so it usually we get up whenever the sun rises here in Canada. So there's no alarm clocks. Okay. And um, we, uh, I'll put wood, some sort of, I'll go outside, chop the wood for the fire. Cause obviously mm -hmm. you have to put it inside the igloo. So, I'll yep. wake up, chop some wood. We'll bring it back to the igloos pretty on. And there's a whole city of them. So um, okay. it almost looks like a suburban city. So we'll have uh, basically <laughs> subpopulations of the igloos. Mm -hmm. So they're usually in sets of 12. That's okay. called a cohort of igloos as well. So the um, the whole city is like this as well. So we'll yeah. I'll chop the, chop the wood, bring it into the igloos. <sighs> Breakfast, you're looking at something pretty simple. It'll probably be mm -hmm. maple syrup. Okay. Um, about it yeah nothing else mm -hmm. with the maple syrup afternoon we're probably playing some sort of hockey um so that's going to be some sort of ice hockey we'll skate to the rink because there's usually no vehicles there so we'll skate to the hockey rink to play some hockey there mm -hmm. and uh afterwards we're probably just going to eat some beaver tails um mm -hmm. have an early night uh we have to prep our bed for the ice because it's a nice ice bed that we're going into so Again, it's a pretty simple life up here. My, it's uh, nothing too crazy for sure. Well, that's amazing. I'm, cur <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's like, uh, and I believe there's more moose than people in Canada. Is that correct? <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Okay. I went, I went way too deep into that too. No, I loved it. I was, I was really trying to make sure we, we, uh, we bought it too. <laughs> we covered all the bases. Um, well, <laughs> I actually heard 35% of the traffic on Amazon.ca is actually moose and beaver, beaver <laughs> related. Yeah, it's the only thing. Those in sweaters all year long, basically. Yeah, I love it. I love it. There's so many assumptions about this bloody country. Yes. I, I, it's something that a lot of people think they know a lot about. Um, and probably it's just exactly what you described. But um in all seriousness, I am so stoked to have you back on the show. I absolutely love our conversations. I don't know how we've cracked the code, but the episodes that we do. So I think uh, I say this a lot in our topic. So we're, we're an Amazon PPC show. So you have like B2B podcasts, mm -hmm. uh, B2B e-commerce podcasts, B2B e-commerce, Amazon podcasts, B2B Amazon e-commerce, Amazon PPC podcasts. So we're, yep. we're down in the weeds so far. And then we smash that with inventory management. And however, we've cracked the code because the episodes that we record together do quite well. Um, so I just want to say uh, on behalf of me, who's an Amazon advertiser, PPCer, uh, number one, thank you for enriching my experience over the years about how inventory can relate to performance and growth overall on Amazon. So, you know, technically, you know, I do Amazon PPC, but like I'm an Amazon growth marketer and I'm helping people grow. And we're talking about a topic today. So number one, thank you. Oh, no, thank you guys. Of course. Yeah. So we're talking about another topic to help people grow, which is if you are selling in the USA, a super easy way to grow, you know, there's tons of ways to grow on Amazon, you know, launch different kinds of ads, do new kinds of keyword research, you know, do more product launches. Uh, do off Amazon traffic and your Google ads traffic to Amazon, like all this stuff, coordinate with influencers. The list is very long. One thing I feel like doesn't always bubble up, but maybe it should, is just like copy, paste and go to Canada. Mm. Uh, like start selling in Canada. So we're going to be talking about Canada as if you're an Amazon FBA or e-commerce store, 
expanding to Canada. And I guess the question is, let's talk pros and cons about right. if you, so if you're an Amazon seller in America right now and you're like, ah, I'd love to grow X percentage next year. Uh, could Canada be that path for them? So we talk about Canada a ton and mm -hmm. we're biased, obviously up here in the, uh, the great white North, it's going to be a popular conversation, but yeah. Mike, like this, this year alone has been like a huge change in the amount of interest. And m here's my thesis behind a lot of what's happening. And it's a, a bit of my own assumptions along with just asking brands and trying to understand the key reason they want to expand internationally. Cause I think every seller thinks about it, but there's a really mm. small subset that actually execute on it. Mm. It's just like all the other exciting things that they want to do with their brand, but it, there's, there's a list. And sometimes international expansion just kind of gets deprioritized compared to the other things or whatever they might be thinking about. So I think this year specifically, as you saw with like your guys, like different sellers performances, the brands and sellers, they're trying to make, they're, they're trying to squeeze the lemon that they currently have. So they're they're thinking about like how do we just drive more revenue without spending a whole new sweep of money? There is there more squeeze inside the juice, basically. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways that why Canada and my thesis is getting so interesting is that if you want to double your sales, even call it say increase of twenty percent over the next year, you can do that through just like how you mentioned, Mike, like running more ads. It's going to cost you more, but you can run it. You can do off-channel advertising. It's going to cost more, but again, you can do it. And expanding internationally is one of those things that if you do it properly, there's no increased cost that you're going to end up taking. So it's just almost like one of the organic plays that you can end up doing to drive new revenue. So I think this is why it's getting so interesting because you're not expanding new products or spending new money. You're just you're offering a catalog to more people just more, more eyes. It's like, um, it's, it's, it's a pretty simple thought process in the whole of it. Uh, but it's just becoming more popular this year because I don't think people have the budgets that they're spending or balling out with a, a year ago. So mm -hmm. now they're just looking, can we just get more swing out of the same bat uh, mm -hmm. is my thesis behind it basically. Right. I mean, it seems so attractive for, for me who doesn't know a ton about it, which is why we're here. It almost seems like, is it just filling out some forms and filling out some paperwork for the most part? Like you fill out some paperwork. Now all of a sudden you have access to, you know, what is it? 30 million people in Canada. Like you, you just expand. It's like, you're just like, you're adding another, like, I don't know the population of California or Texas or New York, but like those are like, or Florida, but those are like the big U S states. So it's just like, you're yeah. tacking on another one or two of those. You're adding another LA. I like California yeah. as a whole, basically. Yeah. It's like, it's almost an identical population, which is why I think some people like undervalue it where they're like, mm -hmm. okay, well it's one more state, but it's all this extra work. So they're, yeah. they're kind of going through this pro and con. So I'll go through a couple of pros and cons and then I'll actually yeah. go through a playbook for everyone listening of exactly how to do it. And you can launch in two weeks. Like it's, it's unfathomably simple, but brands just overcomplicate it. And it's because there's really not a lot of content around it. It's just, it's kind of like an unknown. It's just like a yeah. gray area. And uh, it's just, uh, again, it's like the weeds of the weeds of the weeds. So it's just such a niche topic that there's not many people. So I thought I'd be the man to say, okay, I'm going to put the, the Canadian flag on my back and uh, and walk down <laughs> the, the main streets to make sure that we can Let's make some noise it. about it, basically. So the pro and con. My recommendation, if you're doing, call it a million dollars a year, you can do it when you're doing less. Like maybe you're a really fast growing brand. Some sellers do it a little bit too early. So number one is, are you doing, let's say a million dollars a year? Um, more than $50,000 a month in revenue on amazon.com should be like the, um, the break part. Unless mm -hmm. it's like a very, very exploding product you just launched and you're getting questions about Canada, then it could change. And the other key requirement that I recommend is that you have NARF set up on your Amazon account already. So NARF, for anyone listening, this is North American Remote Fulfillment. So Mike, I know you guys have probably spoken about this in the past. Maybe we even did too at some point with the inventory limits. Yes. I've heard of NARF the first time with you. I think on our last time. Mm -hmm. so, to, so to recap, it's allowing... So you'll, you'll send your stock to a US Amazon warehouse and then 
if a customer from Canada orders it, they'll ship it from a U.S. address. Same with Mexico as well. So you're just using uh, more of your U.S. stock and it's allocated towards Canada or Mexico. When we first spoke, the huge challenge was because, well, if you have a big inventory limit challenge, now you're, you even have less stock available inside of Amazon because some of it's like partially allocated towards Canada. And that's where we're like, hey, like remove that, like turn off Nerf at the time because right now you're during an inventory challenge. It's not the case anymore for the most part. But the reason that I recommend having Nerf on at least is that it's not a great experience for a Canadian customer, which is why I'm against Nerf as a whole. Uh, and it's a it's a bold conversation. But the uh, the key difference is that like if a Canadian shopper, like while I'm riding my moose and uh, drinking my maple syrup, when I order off of Amazon.com with Nerf, Mike, it's like a it's a terrible experience. Like I I can pull them up, and any Canadian seller can can do the same process. If you go on Amazon.ca, and if I find a garlic press on Amazon.com that I want to buy that's in this Nerf program, it's probably going to be around five to ten day shipping. Yeah. There's also imports and duties. So when that garlic press arrives to my house, I'm going to have a UPS driver with his interact saying, pay me up. Mm. It's like 10 bucks or 12 wow. bucks that I have to pay for it. Like it's, and, and it was already delayed 10 days. Like it's, it's just a really Brutal. sloppy experience. Um, so some of these brands are doing NARF and they're running ads in Canada and they're like, gosh, like my Canadian ads aren't converting. And I'm like, you dummy. Like it says 10 day shipping. Like, of mm-hmm. course you're not getting the right conversion and you're just, you're actually hurting yourself yeah. on there. So NARF's great to just get a gauge of what Canadian customers, because boy, if, if they're willing to wait 10 days and pay import fees, mm-hmm. you must really love the product or they, yeah. they love the brand or maybe there's nothing up here in Canada. So it's a really good signal for the most part. Um, NARF just allows you to basically qualify that. So if you have NARF on, you can basically test the waters to get a feeler of it. And that's usually like my first layer to say whether or not Canada is the right time for a brand. I love it. So the, the notes there for me was, uh, if you break 50K a month on Amazon.com, mm-hmm. uh, begin to sort of explore here. Uh, you can turn on NARF as a gauge to see how people enjoy the products. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, And I'm sure also... I've historically found the Amazon advertising in Canada to be a little bit softer. Like there's not as many competitors uh, because people sort of almost like don't go over the the hurdle to get there. So it's a little softer. The CPCs are a little bit cheaper relative yep. to the cost of your, the, the, the sale price of your product. So you get sort of better A costs. It's a little bit softer competition. So turning on NARF can be a way to sort of assess that. And I'm super intrigued by what you said was you can do it fast. Um, So you could potentially do it in two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Like tell tell me about that. Yeah. So two, two key winners, because a lot of sellers have NARF on. And if you don't have, like you can check, if you click edit listing, uh, you'll be able to see like inside the back end. there's usually like uh, you'll see your price for us usually right underneath that, you'll see two other options for Mexico and Canada. And like, usually you can just toggle it on. Um, so mm-hmm. it, like the turn on NARF is super easy. So yeah. majority of sellers, most of the time, they don't even know they have it on, but they do. Wow. And um, as a seller, what you can do is you can go through and audit your, uh, your business reports to see how many are coming from Canada. And the reason that I say that is that, so for example, we have a seller, Mike, and then I'll dive into the, that two-week roadmap. Mm-hmm is that we have a seller that was doing, call it like 5,000 a month through NARF. So they checked their business report. They do around like 60,000 a month. And they went to their business report and they're like, oh my gosh, like every month we're actually getting around $5,000 in Canadian customers. When you convert that, so when you turn off NARF and actually send product to a Canadian FBA warehouse, which means that you're prime in Canada, you can properly run ads oh, like wow. this is where it will be a game changer. On average, it's an 8x lift. Wow. Organically, like without changing anything. If you're doing 5,000 a month, Michael, I'll, I'll never do public math on a podcast mm-hmm. because I don't, I'm never going to get got, I got you with a calculator. 5,000. And we want to multiply it by? Number eight. 1.8. Oh, eight. Just eight. Hot damn. 40K, baby. 
<laughs> so you're looking at potentially, and this is on average, some are yeah. bigger ones depending on the category. Some are less if right. it's a more niche 8X. category. 8X lift. So it's like, it's a big deal. Um, and it's, it's pretty simple to do. So like when we're talking about numbers, if you do 10,000 a month through the NARF program, like that's some big numbers. You can make, mm-hmm. it's a million dollar business in Canada. Mm-hmm. So people disrespect it, but you gotta, you gotta look at the numbers. I'm like, come on. I was like, give mm-hmm. us, give us a damn chance up here. Mm-hmm. What you mentioned about ads is exactly right. It's the, the competition up here is nowhere near as competitive. Like the, the, the supplement category up here, I know in the States, it's like dog eat dog. And there's, oh, yeah. <laughs> there's keywords that are like 15, $20 a click. That's like, yeah, that's unheard in Canada. And it's just, Cause there's like these hoops that people need to go through and no one wants to go through the hoops. Like most people are just super lazy. So they don't care to have to go through the hoops to be able to do it. So you can win easily. Pa- paperwork is like the fourth circle of hell. I think, you know, it's, it's think like, so. it's scary. It's a scary logistics place. Logistics is the third basically. So it's just, uh... <laughs> so, so, so let's make it less scary here. So like, let's try to visualize what this process looks like. So a couple of key steps that have to get done. So let's go through the playbook of expanding your brand into Canada. And it is very simple. So I'm going to walk you guys through the steps of every single piece of it uh, without getting too technical. So to expand into Canada, misconception number one is that you need to have a business entity in Canada. So all these sellers are like, oh man, I'm going to have to set up a business and I'm going to have to get a new home in Canada and have to live with Blair and the Igloos. It's mm-hmm. not the case. <laughs> not the case. All you have to do is you set up a thing and, and like we have a brokerage that will help set it up. It's called an NRI. So this is what's called, Michael, a non-resident importer. So this allows you to ship into Canada without being an actual Canadian citizen. Cool. So you can submit it. So there's a one piece of paperwork. It's usually around like a hundred bucks to submit it. And the government will give you basically like a tax code for Canada. And it just allows you at the end of the year that you can submit your taxes for Canada. And uh, the tax part we're going to get through because that's super easy as well. Um, But the NRI allows you to ship your product into Canada. So step number one is get the NRI set up. On average, it usually takes around three to five days. As long as you're a business in the US, it's like super easy to do. And uh, they'll give you the paperwork. You'll get the tax code. You'll have a thumbs up. Number two is that you need to set up some sort of brokerage account. So there's a thousand and one brokerages out there. There's a ton. We can give you some referrals or we can give a list of them afterwards. And what they'll allow you to do is basically just make all the paperwork is in place when you're shipping into Canada. So a lot of sellers ship like DDP from China into the US, um, which is like a really informal way. It means like duties and uh, duties delivery paid. but Getting into Canada, the brokerage will just make sure that like any paperwork is paid for and approved to get in. So when you ship into Canada, there's one key fee, which is your GST, which is 5% of the goods. So if you're shipping in, call it $100,000 of cost of your garlic presses, Canada basically as the government takes 5% of that. That's the cost of shipping it into the country. Now, the caveat, because people will then go, oh my gosh, what? Yeah. Five, oh, raise the alarm yeah. bells. Yeah. My, my, freedom, my freedom sensor <laughs> is, is not, not good right now. Yeah. So usually what ends up happening, when you're in .ca, most sellers will increase their price around 20%. Sometimes we even see 30%. So if you sell it for $19.99 in the States... No public math on the podcast, but mm-hmm. you can increase that another 20% just by selling mm-hmm. it on dot CA because there's just, yes. it's less competition. So you're allowed to, our, our price point in Canada, we're more, um, we're more elastic. So we're, we're more able to take on a bit more fees just because there's not a hundred garlic presses. There's only six mm-hmm. to get an idea. Cool. What was that number, Michael? 20% of that. 1999. 21, 21 bucks, 21.99. We can make it. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So we, like, we'll see them high, and you guys can compare it by going to dot scene.com for your yeah. product. Usually like sometimes they're like crazy spiked up prices. Like there's like random products up here that are like 300 bucks for a garlic press. <laughs> and people are like, and that's a good sign. That means like no one's actually taking it serious yeah. basically. Very cool. So 
this sounds like we're filling out some forms. We're thinking about our pricing due to the GST that we're now going to get. Uh, what comes after that? So we set up a tax account. So there's a we have our tax guy, and uh, we don't need to worry about him till the end of the year. Mm. And if you're making less than thirty thousand dollars, they don't need to worry about him at all. Because uh, in Canada, you don't have to claim the taxes until you do over thirty thousand dollars in mm-hmm. revenue. Cool. And I'm not a tax advisor, so anything I say, take it with a grain of salt. I'm I'm yeah. the logistics guy, so I'll smile and wave about it. But the taxes is just to make sure that .ca you still have to submit the taxes at the end of the year. Uh, we have a gentleman that they just you speak to him once a year. He gets it done with. It's not required on day one to set up. Like as long as you have your NRI. You can ship in tomorrow. Uh, but again, like you probably don't want to wait for a last minute. As sellers, we will. That's fine. Mm-hmm. We all procrastinate. So say la vie. Yeah. So on December 31st, if you have to get your tax guy right. set up. Um, but December, thir- very December 31st process. is when I turn on my Black Friday ads. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. So we set up an NRI. So we have the brokerage account, right? Um, we're going to set up the tax afterwards. The next step we're going to do is we're going to syndicate the listing. Hmm. So if we're selling in Canada, what we're going to do is that there's a thing called global listings. And when you syndicate your listing, what will happen is it will literally just create a mirrored image of itself on Canada, on Mexico. You can also do it for European markets. So instead of creating a whole new listing, when you syndicate the listing, it will actually mirror all your reviews. So you're not starting on ground one, basically. So it'll be the same ASIN, the same barcode label. So if it's already pre-labeled, then you get the bypass having to relabel all the products again. It's just a one-to-one duplicate. And now you're entering Canada with 100 reviews, 1,000 reviews, and you already have a leg up from anyone else because of it. So that that's the next step, but probably and arguably the most critical spot instead of starting over. Cool. That uh, sounds amazing. Now you have your .ca. So you can actually, on your Seller Central, on the little top where it says Amazon.com, you can click that, toggle down, and go to your .ca. So everything's ready. You'll be able to see your listings. So you can click Add Listing and then Add the ASIN is the easiest way to do it. And it just add the ASIN from the US. It'll be live inside of Canada. You're ready to rock with. So you have the paperwork for the brokerage. They're going to make sure you get your product into Canada. You have the listing set up. So now Amazon's got the green light and listings are syndicated. So we're all good. Now we just need to plan the shipment. So in the US, if you use a warehouse or maybe you send it from China directly or from Michael's garage, whatever it looks like, you'll just go ahead and create that shipping plan on Seller Central. So when we look at Canada, we're going to create the Seller Central shipping plan, right? And there's basically two ways that you can ship into Canada. Number one is you can ship directly to Canada. So if you have a U.S. warehouse, you actually have the option to just ship it to a Canadian FBA warehouse. So there's a ton of shipping providers, whether it's a small parcel or it's a freight. We can plan to make sure that your product goes from your Kentucky 3PL or your warehouse, your garage, slap a UPS shipping label on it and ship it right to an Amazon FBA hub. This is usually the easiest way for phase one just to try out the market. So you can Mm -hmm. create a a Canadian shipment plan and say, hey, I'm shipping it from Kentucky. You're going to go get a UPS label from wherever you're getting your UPS label. Grab it, slap the label on it. We're going to let the brokerage know and just say, we're going to send them a quick email. Say, hey, we got the shipment. Can you give it the thumbs up? Mm -hmm. Broker's going to say, good to go, ship it away. And then you're going to ship it to a Canadian warehouse. Once it's received inside of a Canadian warehouse, you're locked and loaded. Now mm-hmm. you're officially prime inside of Canada. Cool. The alternative way is, say it's coming from China directly. There's actually a ton of benefits to shipping directly to Canada. So Michael, like um, you guys have what, what, what us Canadians call Trump tariffs in essence. Mm. And mm. Um, th- th- these are ones where like some of these sellers get hit with really high tariffs, like things like wood is a big one. There's some mm-hmm. like um, like pet products that get hit with this very bad. And when you ship into the US, you get hit with what's called a 25% uh, Trump tariff in essence. Mm-hmm. So that means that like if you ship in $100,000 worth of goods, the US is going to take 25% of that 
as just cost as a little thank you note at the border mm-hmm. and say, yeah, this is this is now mine because you're shipping this into our country. If you can and you get hit with this tariff, if you ship into Canada, we don't have these so-called Trump tariffs. Um, it's a little cheat code that people end up doing. So what they'll do is they'll just send their next shipment directly into Canada. So mm-hmm. they might try to send it directly. They might send it to one of our warehouses and then we just, on Monday we grab it and then Tuesday we flip it back out to one of the warehouses. Um, but it's a it's a huge strategy so that you have to avoid and like that's 25% of your profitability. Like yeah. it's, it's a really big number. So anyway, so then Canada actually becomes a lot more profitable. So you can spend way more in ads because of it. And it's like a, it's a whole other world. And it's just, it's yeah. so deep into this logistics importing space that like most sellers just don't, they don't, they don't even know about it or have to consider it basically. You're blowing my mind right here. So this is great. Um, so sending it directly to the, in, in that case, once you get set up, uh, once you, uh, set up your NRI, you get your broker, you send your goods directly from, you know, point of origin from China directly into Canada, bypass tariffs if that's an issue. Yep. And then uh, you're prime in Canada, which is it's wild. Now, the some of the key challenges. So what we'll recommend is that so once you're prime inside of Canada, because like all of that can get done in like a week and a half. It's like, it's like a really quick process. As long as you can move quickly too, we usually recommend whatever you sell in the US. So I don't know, say you have a hundred products, right? Maybe we might say ship out your top 10% of products first. Mm-hmm. So we'll say ship out your top 10% and ship out 10% of what it sells in the US. So if you have a hundred ASINs, you're going to grab your top 10 ASINs. You're going to look at what those sell on a monthly basis and take 10 to 20% of that And put those into a box and then ship it to a Canadian warehouse. This is what we call like our pilot run. This way you Mm -hmm. don't overstock Canada um, because again, like some markets are going to change or it might be more competitive that you thought, or it might be less of an opportunity that you might consider. So this is basically our pilot run. We'll take 10% of the catalog. If you have less than like 20 SKUs or 30 SKUs, I would just recommend getting everything up there. It's, it's, it's easy. If you're putting it on, as long as you're not shipping bloody uh, tables or couches, like you can fit it all into one of the boxes and then and then ship it across the border. Basically, um, the the thing to be considerate of is that your Canadian ads, Michael, like you mentioned, that um, the CPC is going to be softer, so you have a little more wiggle room, so you don't have to come out as competitive, is what we've noticed. And um, the other thing to consider is that there is some relevancy of like different keywords. So you can take a lot of the inspiration from the US, but there is like just verbal changes that do end up happening in Canada, like um, gray versus gray, right? There's a there's a spelling difference, the way that Canadians spell it, the way US spell it, uh, color versus color, right? You spell it one way, we spell it the other way. And if you're just using your US algorithm, it might not pick up these other relevant ones. Mm-hmm. And um, the other ones too could be French. So in the states, you guys mm. might put like Spanish keywords in the back end. Yeah, uh, it's it's been blow. No one speaks Spanish here in Canada, so <laughs> it's going to be a very limited opportunity. So you can find like a simple French translator to add some of these these keywords in either to your listing or to your campaign if you have the the real estate. Um, but you just need to be cautious of these things because it's close, but it's not one to one, and uh, you just got to be cautious of it. Yeah, I consider that like. Uh you know, localization and SEO, you want Mm. to, you know, not just, you want to be, you want your listings to match and your keywords to match how, what people actually use. Uh, It's really interesting concept about how like language changes over time, even within like English, it changes over time where somebody might be searching for something that wasn't even a word, you know, 10 years ago. What, what's even cooler. Like we had, um, we had an umbrella brand, they're a huge umbrella brand. They're a big private label seller. And uh, they sold these like really colorful umbrellas, like pink and blue and the rainbow ones. And they were really into that whole community. And um, when we helped them do like the whole Canadian expansion, but we did it into the UK Mm. and like their product heavily underperformed. It was like Canada crushed it. UK was like an absolute flop. And um, what we ended up learning is that UK is a culture 
really doesn't like these like bright pinks and bright mm-hmm. green umbrellas. They like um, they're a shade country. Um, mm. So they they like the black umbrellas, the grays, the tints, the dark greens, the navy yeah. blues. So it's a it's just like a different. And you would think like oh they they think like us, they operate like us. But like you mentioned, like there's this little mm-hmm. localization there where they don't want maybe a pipe. A bright pink umbrella that's more of like a u.s canadian thing Mm -hmm. so it's just like it's these small differences you wouldn't consider just like adding some french relevancy to the listing too it's 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 weird but again you have to consider it i don't think it's priority number one like um you can set up shop and figure out your uh your french afterwards because like that's like that's marginal wins and right now like you putting on fba in canada that's going to be the biggest revenue left and then if you have the bandwidth or it's worth it, then you can get a little bit more technical with the thought process too. I love that. I love that consideration because you can build an endless list of reasons like, uh, of like think reasons not to do it. Like, Oh man, I'm going to have to do this. I need to do like Canadian market research to do Canadians even like, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, do they need something for summer? (laughs) Is it like 12 degrees there all year round? 12 Fahrenheit. Yeah. Yeah. Bingo. Bingo. (laughs) So it's like all these different questions uh, that you have to consider. And it's like you've laid out a pretty straightforward process, which is really cool. Uh, I feel inspired. Uh, I don't even sell uh, in the U.S., but I'm ready to start selling in Canada. You got me all fired up. It's fun, man. Like it's um, once people get it, it's like a mini cheat code. And like the reason that we're also pushing it, like we work, Michael, like we work with those really big sellers and uh, we work with like all the aggregators and the aggregator words a, a little bit sensitive at the mm. moment for all the good reasons, but we use these, like we like work with a lot of those top 100, like the marketplace false ones or the aggregators. And uh, whether you love them or hate them, they um, they're usually four to five steps ahead in some instances where we like to see what their thought process is and then follow suit behind and try to share it with some of the smaller businesses that might mm-hmm. not have the capital to be thinking three years ahead. And like all of them are thinking about expansion because it's such like an easy new net revenue without a huge new push of ads or organic or new influencers and TikTok. So Mm -hmm. we're seeing all them do it. And there, there's a, there has to be a method behind the madness. So like Canada is the big one, but now we're seeing a ton of brands tap into Europe. Like that's now being a huge interest as well. And it's a topic for another day, but Europe's getting a lot bigger. Japan's getting interest. People are, talking about Australia and I think there's a conversation for it but like very early stage so again it's um people are getting really excited about the expansion I think some sellers are doing a little bit too early where they haven't even figured out dot com so they might be doing Mm -hmm. a bit prematurely but for the sellers that do have a little bit of justified revenue it's like um it's a cheat code and it's it's cheaper to run ads it's an easy 20 percent lift in your guys sales and now you just get to tap into a local new country and you can like give your product to more people, which is always just, it's just fun. And now you can get to talk about all the Canadians that can order your products and they're usually nicer too. It usually means less returns because people are, uh, people are a little bit, they'll apologize for sending the returns back uh. to Amazon is what I'll think about. So they're a little more lenient if the package mm-hmm. comes in wrong or it comes in late, like we're expecting three to five day delivery time. So if it comes in mm-hmm. three days after prime, we're still like, Oh, great i'm i'm sorry that your delivery man actually had to take an extra day like that's <laughs> we'll somehow figure it out as our fault basically well blair thank you so much is there any are there any closing thoughts about expanding to canada because i think you've you've you ran the gamut here i i think you've empowered a lot of people to get inspired <laughs> no i i i don't think overcomplicated um I, yeah. I think go with your gut and um, make the right call for it just don't overcomplicate it would be my recommendation um and do it one step at a time so my recommendation of playbook, we have three phases of expansions. Phase one expansion, this is your Canada and this is your Mexico. So getting prime enablement in both those countries is phase number one. Phase number two is European expansion. So this would be the UK. And then with that, because you're in product, your products within the UK, you get to tap into the Germany market, Italy, France, Spain, Netherlands. You get access to the pan five so you'll get prime enablement across all of those countries and a lot of the relevancy of english is for the most part it's like germany it's pretty simple so phase one is north american expansion phase two is the european expansion and then phase three is more of like relevance of product so that Mm -hmm. is traditionally 
uh, Japan, it could be Australia, it could be UAE, which is blowing up, it could be India, if it's like a lower ticket item that has high speed velocity. So like, if it's a product that might be popular in Japan, and the data is there, we prioritize Japan, if it's very close to a North American product, we might prioritize Australia, even though it's a small mm. market. So again, bucket it down into to different places and justify it and validate it. Uh, but easy, easy wins going into the next year for sure. Epic. Uh, well, Blair from AMZ Prep, uh, where can people find you if they want to talk to you? I'm trying to get LinkedIn famous, Michael. That's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, Blair Forrest on LinkedIn is a great one to, to, to catch me. Uh, or if there's anything about expansions, uh, it's Canada at AMZ Prep, P R E P. Or I'm sorry, AMZ. Uh, I'll, local, I'll localize that for yeah. our audience. Yes. Uh, Canada at amzprep.com. Yes. There yeah. you go. Or, or Blair at amzprep.com too. Uh, yeah. Any, any questions about it or follow me on LinkedIn? I, I'm posting a ton of content about uh, this international stuff. So it's, uh, it's my little geeking out session at the moment of all things international so i got my uh, canadian jersey i got my maple syrup and we're uh, we're rocking and rolling yes thank you so much blair of course of course